great excitement here and anticipation at the start of the Nissan International Rally. We are standing outside the Civic Center on the foreshore of Cape Town, surrounded by uh, most, if not all, of the 58 entries. And they're very big names in South African motor rallying, names like Saro van Ameva, Nick de Waal, Hannes Krobler, and of course, last year's winner, Serge Damso. At the top of the championship table with wins in the two events which have been run so far. Well, uh, these are the longest event this year we've had so far. So, um, it all depends. If you lose a bit of time, you, you, know, you can make up a bit of time. So, uh, that advantage, but uh, you have to tackle the event a different approach. You know, it's, to get to the end, I think, is the main thing. Sarol van der back to rallying from his season in the United States and obviously in contention for this event. Well, I would imagine we're in there with a chance, but uh, you know, we haven't had a, an excellent year up to date, so it's going to be hard work. I think uh, Serge probably has to start favourite at his hometown, and after that he's in his backyard, so uh, that always, always helps a bit. Also a contender in the top class is Hannes Krobler in the turbocharged Nissan Skyline, a car that's getting better with each event. The motor is in a very better situation than on the first time. We have a lot of things to do with him. I can buy it a free day over the weekend. That's a part line. We can do something else. But I think we can buy a good one over the weekend. And then others like Nick De Waal in his VW Passat Synchro, the top contender in Class B, and of course Johan Evertsen in the Audi Sport. Out of all the entrants, one team features the talent of the fairer sex, Robin Bartholomew, and Teresa van Enter, sure to capture the interest of the rest of the field. All the time. <laughs> yeah, definitely they give us a lot hard time, but it's a lot of teasing and a lot of encouragement actually behind the teasing. The official start to the rally with the cars being sent off by the deputy mayor, Hannes Krobler leading the way. And next up to the line, Serge Damso and navigator Vito Bonafide. With me is Adrian uh, Pfeiffer, who is a well-known racing correspondent for the newspapers and also helping with the commentary on this program. Adrian. Let's have a look at the field. What sort of uh, competition are we going to see in this event? Making a prediction at this stage is very difficult, obviously. Sorrell's been beaten twice. Um, I doubt whether he can be beaten three times in a row. But on the other hand, Serge has done, has done the first two. He made it. Um, the chap who we have to watch out for is Nissan's Hannes Krobler. I think Hannes in his new turbocharged Skyline is going to be a danger today. Well, we'll see what happens. The route that has been set out for the 1988 Nissan International starts with a spectator stage at Killarney and then makes its way through the Southern Cape taking in stages at Somerset West, Hohook, Caledon and then with stages all along the course through Swellendam past Heidelberg and Riversdale and then down to the coast at Mossel Bay. From there it's up to the overnight stop at George and reversing the order of the stages it's back to Cape Town and a final stage at Greenpoint. A total of 1,297 kilometers with 449 kilometers of special stages on the route. And to the start of the special stage at Kalani with rain threatening all along the way. Without a doubt the cream of the motor rallying crop, but a lot of their success depends on the skill and expertise of their backup crew who will follow the cars all the way. First car away, Hannes Krobler and Pitt Swanepoel. Next up, Serge Damso and Vito Bonafide. And the ten times former champion, Saro van der Merwe, navigator Franz Boscher. Into stage two at Somerset West, Adrian Pfeiffer. Saro van der Merwe has had a problem with his foot. Stitches were taken out just a few days ago. Is this going to affect his driving at all? Well, he's had an operation. He's having to use the heel of his foot now for changing instead of the ball. Um, but he's such a talented driver. Really, I don't think it's going to affect him at all. I would think that uh, the drivers are using these early stages to settle down to their cars, work out the coordination between driver and navigator. Well, no, I don't think so, because this competition is going to be that close on this event uh, that these guys are going to have to be settled down right from the beginning. Remember that uh, every second counts from the start, from the drop of the flag at the very first stage. But talking about nerves, um, one wonders if there isn't sometimes more tension amongst the service crews whose job it is to make sure their cars finish the event. It's over Solari's Pass and up into the mountains with Sorrel van der Merwe taking the first stage and Serge Damso the second. Well, we've completed two of the spectator stages, but this is the third stage at Hohook and this is exactly where the rally starts. Hannes, how's it gone so far in the first two stages? 
It's gone very well. Uh, we're quite happy. Uh, we're busy get, uh, getting used to the car and we're hopefully for the other stages. I think we're going to do well. You happy about the weather? Uh, it looks like it's going to rain, but it doesn't matter because it's going to rain for all the guys. A grey cloud covering and Hannes Froble is away. There's very little room for error here with the mountain on the one side and a drop to the valley on the other. Very different to the first two stages. Froble will be looking to notch up a stage to his credit here to keep up with the leaders. Sorrel van der Merwe running in the lead at this time. The road's wet from the recent rains. But one of his main rivals, Serge Damso, has not yet arrived at the start of stage three as a result of a problem with a CV joint and he's fallen back in the starting order. But Nick de Waal, without any problems so far, is establishing himself as leader in class B and a force to be reckoned with in the rally. Into the service area at Bot River. Okay. And after a magnificent run on stage three, clipping 13 seconds off Sarl van der Merwe, Damso moves into the overall lead, but he's still having problems with the steering. It's the first opportunity to refuel, make minor adjustments, and prepare the cars for the stages to come. The start of another stage, but is his foot problem bothering Van der Merwe? If it's okay, but because I'm using my heel, my coordination is a bit out, but uh, it's not that bad. And the course, what's that like? It's been pretty rough up to now, but uh, you know, nothing serious. Although in third place, Hannes Probler doesn't seem to be having any problems. Well, now they're out in the open flat stretches and the drivers obviously have a chance to get up some speed here. Yes, this is where turbocharged V6 Nissan power really comes into its own. The top cars are pushing out oh, close to 550 brake horsepower, which is not that much less than the modern Grand Prix single-seaters. Of course, that sort of power is all very well, but what counts is getting it onto the ground. Uh, the Taro von der Merwe Audi is an imported uh, vehicle, but the car which Serge is driving is virtually a homemade. It was built in South Africa. It's quite a fantastic. It's, it's unique in the world, apparently. And what sort of speed are they hitting? On a stretch like this, they must be doing close to 200 k's. But top speed is not all that important on an event of this nature, because much of it is it's much tighter than, than the section we see there. Of course, breaking away from the leaders, there are as many tussles down the field as there are in the front. As you could see, one of the fastest of the two wheel drive cars, second place in class B, Yanni Hubbing. Frank Lindemann with superb driving skills. Bruce Terry and Alan Casley of Western Province giving the gate post a wide berth. de Cunha and Paul Ruyard just clipping the post. But an obvious problem as the Nissan loses drive. Frustrations of mechanical failures as Nuno gives vent to his feelings. What's that, a 13 in there, 12? But actually, have all these two nuts in it. Side shaft is off. I beg your just needs two nuts over there. You push it right through. This side of the bolts are right. But the race, for some, still carries on. And Nuno is left in the dust. Bossy Bosman and Quibus Krobola from Western Province. Glenn Hall and Martin Buerta doing well. Very few problems and giving a good account of themselves, Eric Sanders and Thilo von Westenhagen. At the end of stage 10, Sarl van der Merwe is in the lead, just a few seconds ahead of Hannes Krobler, with Serge Damso having experienced some problems close on their heels.
Into stage 11 and the rally well underway. On a scrobler, although in second position, it's an ideal place for him to make up ground. But it's going to take a lot to catch this man, Saul van der Merwe, in the Audi. But the winner of the last three championship rallies, Serge Damso, experiencing some problems, is battling to keep up with the front runners. Nick Deval, doing what's expected of him, that's to lead Class B. The route winds through the hilly area of the Southern Cape, and at times the stages pass right through the farmyards. Because he could see and Wiley Harrington, Yanni Habig, and Evald van Rensburg. Dicky Claver and Douglas Judd. Evitzer and Steve Harding in their Audi Sport. The drivers are getting tired now, but still they're clocking up good times, sometimes even losing a bit of concentration. After stage, the rally approaches the end of the first day.